This client has paid me over $900,000 over the last 18 months and they've happily done so and I'm here to show you why. Now, obviously, clickbaity title, and I hate these titles because it almost seems like boasting. You see tons of these online and most of them are full of shit anyway. So what I wanna do is I wanna dissect my business model now and hopefully help you understand one thing, is that the more valuable you become, the more skills you attain, the more you can actually offer to charge people, but more importantly, the more you'll make. I think about this in terms of I'm not actually charging my particular client over here. I've just made them so much more money that they've happily paid me over $900,000, Australian dollars that is. So, you know, if you translate that, that's about $600,000 in the US. Still a lot of money, okay, but sounds better in Australia. So I wanna share some things that I think can be extremely valuable to you and why somebody would wanna pay me an exorbitant amount of money. $900,000 in 18 months is quite a lot of money okay, to sm most small businesses. Now, prefacing this, I wanna go back to like my days in 2017 all the way to 2020. I was running a coaching company. I was showing a lot of fitness coaches. I was running a business opportunity, showing fitness coaches how to start and grow their online fitness, how to transition out from being a personal trainer to online fitness business. It's something that I did in 2013, 2014 when I started, and I got it to about $250,000 a year, and then I started to go, wow, I can teach this, and so lots of people asked me how to do it. We systemized the process. I joined Russell Brunson's Mastermind, I built a webinar, and I got tons of people through. Now, by the time of 20, 2020 came along, Carrie was pregnant, and I was having my first baby, Ocean. Okay, Ocean's four years old now. And I got to a point where I was just completely burnt out. Like I'd literally been on this journey for, for, for four years. I was coaching, I was running all, events all around the world. I was teaching personal trainers how to build their entire online business, literally showing them everything from advertising, marketing, sales, fulfillment, coaching people, mindset, upgrading themselves. I was literally becoming like Tony Robbins, matched with Jay Abraham. I don't know who Jay Abraham is, probably like, you'll probably know Alex Hormozzi, but like modern, just all of these people in order to get my clients successful. Now I got to a point in 2020, I was just like burnt out. I didn't even know I was burnt out. I was like, man, like at the time, I was kind of feeling a little burnt out. I was a little bit stressed. You go back to the older videos, I had gray hairs everywhere, right? Gray hairs were coming out, a bit more puffy. I had massive bags, bigger bags than this. And I was like younger. So crazy enough, 2020 comes around, I have a baby. And Kerry and I decide, look, I need to retire. I'm not enjoying this anymore. I'm not, I'm not enjoying the weight and the pressure of the coaching. There has to be something else here. So I decide, hey, I'm going to shut down the whole program. I shut it down and I just literally sat on my ass and became a dad. It was the best two years of my life. Like I literally regrew these black hairs. I don't have as many grays. My bags went down and I just really started to just discover my youth again. And I sat on my ass on the bed two years and I retired. I lived on the Mornington Peninsula and just be, allowed myself to be a father. The best two years of my life. As I got itchy feet, I started to think, well, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna get back into the scene? I just thought to myself, hey, I wanted to do something a little bit deeper. I wanted to work with clients more one-to-one -one at a higher level. Like, I didn't wanna talk about newbie stuff. I didn't wanna talk about how to get your first five clients or how to build an online business or any of that shit, right? Like, I was just a bit over it. But I wanted to do something more advanced. I wanted to talk about like, how do you actually build and run fulfillment programs? How do you hire, train, onboard people? How do you build teams and, and how do you market to a high level? And how do you build sales organizations? How do you look at finances and tax? And how do you forecast over the next 12 months? And so I sat there and I thought to myself, okay, if I'm gonna go back in the market, I need to find five, six people, a dozen people who I think can work at this high level, who have the capacity to build a, a, an actual brand and a movement that actually has legs. I put it on an email to my list and I said, hey, like, I'm coming back, I'm looking for a dozen people to work with, um, I'm not gonna charge you anything, okay? I'm not gonna charge you anything, but what I will charge is any additional revenue that I make and bring on into your business, I get a piece of the pie, okay? So like, if you're making $100,000 a month right now, if you're making $5,000 a month, if you're making 10, 15, 50, a million dollars a month, you keep that. Any additional revenue I bring in, like when I come in, when I step in, January 1st, 2022, we hit it hard, I come in, any additional revenue, I'll take a small piece of the pie and you get the big piece and you get me. And I'll come in, advise, consult. And so I wanna preface this because a lot of you watch this and you'll be like, oh, how do I do this? And I'm like, well, you have to go through a couple of years of experience by doing shit, by learning shit, by acquiring skills, by working for free, by working for cheaply so that you can actually just test all your theories. And this is the thing that I done from 2014 when I quit being a physio, when I quit being a personal trainer all the way through 2020, just like consuming, testing shit, trying shit, and, and actually having that experience. And more importantly, than that experience, I made this incredible offer. First things first, my offer was, hey, I don't want any of your money. 
don't pay me any money. I'm not, this isn't a charge. And I said this at the start of the video, I'm not gonna charge you any money. I'm actually gonna make you money and whatever percentage that I make you, okay, additional revenue, I'll take a small cut. I'll be humble, I'll take a small piece of the pie and I'll give you the big piece of the pie. How does that sound? Every, everybody will obviously raise their hands. And so that allowed me to actually go in and pick and choose. I'm gonna pick and choose the people that I think have the highest potential. So I went through all of these businesses and I started to look at the acquisition processes. I, look at, I looked at the way, are they advertising? Are they marketing? What is their offer? What is their selling? What are they selling? Is it easy to sell? Like basically, are these AirPods easier to sell than this fucking like remote control? Which one's easier to sell? Well, I don't think a remote control is actually gonna be that easy. This has brand value behind it's gonna be easier to sell one of these, especially if we can actually bundle it, add more stuff to it, right? So I looked at what are people selling? I looked at how are they selling it? Are they advertising? And I looked at the ads and I was like, well, if they're selling this much right now, is the advertising poor? Could I improve the advertising? Could I write better copy? Could I create a better video ad? Could I do something more extravagant with my skill sets? And then I just audited all these businesses and I said, what are they selling? How are they selling it? And then I looked at the retention. Do they have retention systems built in place? Okay, because the one key factor I realized was that my value was coming in to optimize and, and tweak all of these underperforming areas that they had. Firstly, I needed to identify the bad potential. Okay? If they don't have potential, well, there's not much of a runway. Like if, if I can take somebody from uh, $500,000 a year to a million dollars a year, there's 500,000 net there. And then like I take a small piece of the pie, let's say 10%, there's only 50 grand. Now I managed to do 900 grand in 18 months and here's how I did it. First, I went inside of the business. I'm not gonna name the business obviously for like privacy sake because I don't want them to be flashed around all over the internet. But I started to look at three things. I started to look at how do I get them more customers? How do I get the customers to pay more, okay, for their services? And then how do I keep customers for longer? Okay, these were three things. It's the, the bare basics of growing any business. How do you get more customers? How do you get customers to pay you more money? How do you keep customers coming back? This has been like bare rooted of, of business principles, I think just, I don't know who did it, but someone did it really smart. And it's it's just been made famous by my good friend, Alex Hormozzi. But going back to that, number one, I started to look at how can I actually get more customers for these person? So I started to look at paid ads. I started to recognize, shit, like they're running ads, their cost per click is about $3. How can I convey the message better? How can I write better ads? How can I hook a person in? How can I, how can I write a better hook? How can I write better copy? How can I format it better? How can I create a better image that actually pops and stops the scroll on Facebook to actually drop that click from $3 to $1.50? And then assuming everything else stays the same. Right, And then I started to look at everything because the craziest part is when I'm incentivized correctly and when you're incentivized correctly, this is why I hate salaries. Salaries don't incentivize anybody properly. So it's very hard to get high performing people who are actually gonna be outcome focused on the salary. Right, they just, their salary, they're gonna get paid whether or not they win, lose, don't show up, they're on sick days, etc., etc. they get paid either way. What I started to recognize in this is that because I was incentivized to grow the business as much as I can, I'll get paid more if I get focused, if I get a piece of the pie growing the company even more. My job was to figure out how can I grow this as fast as possible, right? That was the first thing. Fast is always not good, by the way, and I'll be able to share some lessons on growing too fast and what happens. But going back to this, it's like, how do I get more customers? I look at ads, I go, how do we improve ads? I look at the funnel and go, how, how do we get more appointments? How do we get more booked appointments? I looked at the sales process. I, I filtered out the sales team and listened to the sales calls and gone, holy shit, these guys are absolute shit. We need to actually create systems and standards in here and training. Okay, so a lot of my job was looking at these underperforming systems per se. Systems around advertising, systems around marketing, systems around the offer, systems around the sales team, systems around the onboarding process, systems about, around retention, systems around the product itself. Like basically, they were just trying to, like when I came in, they were just selling these AirPods. I was like, okay, we need to bundle this and actually make this better. Because we're selling these at 300 bucks. Where could we sell this at 600? How do I get the customers to pay 600 for this? And then how could we bundle and offer stack this so that we can add more things and create a bit of a bundle so that the perceived value is higher? So instead of selling this, we'll, we'll probably, we, we created, we added in events, we added in one-to-one -one coaching, we added all these different offers and bonuses, and then we actually did one thing. It, and I think it's gonna be a, a separate video because I can't compact it into this. It was like we made the offer more tangible, more outcome orientated, and we gave them access to something they didn't have access to before. I think this is one of the most powerful things when you're trying to create a bundle and an offer. Access to a group of elite men, okay? Access to a group 
of people that they had to pay for access for that they could not get anywhere else. They can get coaches, they can get one-to-one -one coaching, they can get courses anywhere else. But if you can create access to this, almost this hidden society of status, that when you're paying for status, you get access to this room that you would not get anywhere else. This is why luxury brands do so well, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, because what you're paying for, when you pay for a Rolex over here, you're not paying for the watch itself. You're not paying for the actual, you know, the craftsmanship or any of that bullshit. What you're paying for is you're paying for a signaling tool to go out. So whenever I wear this and I see somebody on the streets and they say, oh my God, you have a nice Rolex. They're like, I'm gonna talk to you. You're somebody important. That's what most people pay for this for. I don't even know what the fuck this does in terms. I don't know the mechanics. I don't know the, the, the things and how to build. It's all, and it's, all, it's all a bit of a nice story to tell me and to justify my thing. Oh yeah, this is like craftsmanship. It was built something by some someone there and the factory is really important. You know, I don't know. But anyway, this is a $20,000 watch. And the reasons why it is, is because when I wear it, I can go outside and somebody will see the watch and go, wow, this guy's important. I'm gonna regard him as a, as a higher status. And we can start the conversation elsewhere. That person becomes more interested in talking to me about that than, than I do about them. And so it, it shifts the frame. It's a very, very important thing. But anyway, I think we're gonna move on a video uh, on, on that particular topic next. So I'm coming in and I'm trying to find all of these underlying and underutilized assets, advertising, the marketing funnel, the offer itself. How can we actually charge more for this? The sales process, the sales teams, the sales systems, onboarding and training of people, okay? The onboarding and training of new clients coming into the experience figuring out how we can actually build and add events. A lot of my work came in at the start to go, I can actually do this myself. I can actually help help them out myself. I can rewrite. Really but then as I did this, I started to hire a team. And the be best part about hiring a team was I knew exactly who I needed to hire. I needed to bring a copywriter. I needed to bring a funnel builder to create these pages, whip it up and test it straight away. Okay, so that's step number one. I started to look at what they had and I improved it. Step number two is I started to add in some systems. So w when I think about this, the job of the founder, generally when you run a small business, a lot of these small businesses, tons of, okay, like 99.7% of businesses are small businesses. They don't get past 10 million, they don't get past 100 million. You, you, at 10 million, you're still required, you're still a small. I don't think, it's it's until you get to a, like 100 million that you're like some, some sort of medium size. So most everybody is a small business. And the craziest part is most founders, most CEOs are working in their business, they're not working on their business. What do I mean by this? Well, they're just like responding to day to day, they're like waking up, oh my God, I've got all this shit coming at me. I've got clients to deal with, I've got a tax bill, I've got this person, everyone wants them, okay? And my job as coming in as a partner is actually going, hey, instead of telling you to work on your business, I'll work on your business. I'll figure out what we're doing for the next 12 months. I'll figure out the new offers that we can actually promote to these people because if they don't want your main thing, we can sell them something else. I'll figure out what we're selling on Valentine's Day as an offer, on your first birthday as an offer, on Christmas, what are you selling for Christmas? So what's our promo strategy? What are we doing for Black, Black Friday? What are we doing here? Like all of these things, the business owners know they should do and they just don't have the time. So my job was easy. It's like I'm incentivized to actually like work on the business. And it was crazy because I could work on the systems and on the business around advertising. How do we create better ads? How do we get three new ads out every week no matter what? And build that system and then it runs. How do I bring in people? I told this company, hey, how do I bring in people to uh, onboard, train, and then I'll train them and then I'll go get them systemized. So my job was actually to take the idea, action it, create a playbook, get somebody in, recruit somebody and get them to implement that and keep the lead measures up, keep that consistency up, look at the report and look at the data and improve it. And, and, and it was fabulous. One of the craziest lessons here is I want, I want to share this with you if you're thinking about doing this. Well, is it easy? It's easy for me now because of the experience that I have. I don't know if it will be easy for you. Like that bubble comes up perfectly. I don't know if it will be easy for you. I, I believe that if you want to get to this point, there's always that transition point. And the transition point is you need to be, uh, if you want to find work and you want to get paid for this work, I think the best thing that you can do to get paid for this work is not take a salary, not take a retainer. Don't get paid anything. Get paid only when you perform. And then you start testing all of these things and hopefully you'll be able to find somebody like one of the small businesses, 99.7, lots of them around, you'll be able to find someone who will allow you to test all these things so you can test your theory. A lot of the times, like when I started out, I had a lot of theory. It wasn't until I got to test it out that I actually built certainty in myself. And then there, I built certainty and trust in myself. I could go back to the marketplace and go, hey, like, here's what I could offer you and I made an offer so good. The question is, 
how, do, how does this apply for you? Is it going to be easy? For me, it's easy. For you, it might be the most difficult thing in the world, simply because we have a different knowledge resource uh, jar right here that we can actually have access to. And so for me, it becomes quite second nature. I enjoy this stuff. I don't enjoy being wedged into like, oh, we're just going to run ads and that's it. And like my life is about ads. I like strategically solving a problem from start to finish because I think about all the problems that I face trying to grow a business. And I wish that I had somebody there like myself to help me grow the business. Does that make sense? I, I, I simply came from this offer two ways. Number one, I don't want to work with a lot of people. Number two, which means if I don't want to work with a lot of people, there's only one way to make a lot of money, charge a lot of money. Okay, so, but I can't charge a lot of money. I, if I put out the offer out there to go, hey, I'm gonna charge a 50K retainer, I would've got crickets. But my offer was like, hey, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I'm gonna make you a ton of money. And if I make you a ton of money and I get a little bit, does that sound fair? It's a win-win, a structure in a win-win way. Number three, I think it's extremely good because at, at the start, like there, there's gonna be so much work that I put in at the start that then keeps paying dividends. So as soon as like, oh, what I mean by this is, like I have to build a system at the start, right? There's a lot of work that and time, energy, energy uh, resources that go into building that system. There's a lot of like six hour days that says, okay, I need to get this straight and I need to make this work, right? But as soon as that system's built, it actually keeps compounding for me over time. And like, I don't have to touch it and it keeps making me money. If there's a sales system that I can build to, to, to go in and improve a sales, uh, person's performance and KPIs and, and, and their ability to track and measure the results and, and help them, that's fantastic. If there's a recruitment system that I can build to replace salespeople if they underperform, that's another thing that keeps paying dividends over time. So these are systems that once you put in, they, you, you get an almost a, a infinite return in terms of uh, time, energy and effort. There's a lot of time, energy and effort built at the start in exchange for an infinite return later on. I hope that point makes sense. The main thing I would have to uh, advise you because I can't. I can't also work with you know thousands of people. I literally take on a dozen or half a dozen people to a dozen people any one time. I started with a dozen, had to move down to half a dozen because it got too much. So, and and generally when you work with a dozen, you you notice that half are like wow making a lot more money than the bottom half simply because they don't have the ability to execute. So I, I cut the can on that one. But just going back to this for you. What does this leave you with if, if you're trying to get into this model where you don't want to work with thousands of people, hundreds of people, but you want to get into this like consulting space where you, you get a piece of the pie? Build your skills. Think about all the different ways that a business can grow. Like I, my skills are specifically around paid advertising, marketing and sales, like phone sales, being able to recruit people and manage people, etc. If you have skills around like organic video editing and, and being able to create videos that fucking sell, then you know this might be amazing because then you can systemize that process, train video editors, onboard, recruit them, and then like just get more videos and 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 it, it like there's there's infinite possibilities of how to do this. So the, the advice is focus on what you want to focus on and, and double down on that. The last thing I'll leave you with is this. Is this a viable business model later on? No. Because you're always tied to the business and the growth of the business. And what I mean by this is there's, there's pros and cons. The pros of this business model is that I get to work with six people. I get to work with people that I love. I get to uh, work on my own time. I'm not, I'm not tied to anything. But it's not an asset that later on I can then package up and sell. It's not an asset that I'm building, like the two years that I've been, been spending consulting at this level, it's not something that I can actually sell later on. So there's no equity value. When you think about a business, there's a business that gives you cash flow, which is great, okay? But a business essentially should not only give you cash flow, but it should also build in brand equity. It's an investment that you build up and then you can sell later on. So it's got two things. This has great cash flow, it's got zero brand equity. And so it's probably like one of the most highest paying freelance jobs in the world. It's like super glorified, but it's the most rewarding because I have the flexibility, I have the freedom. I'm not, re I'm not reporting um, to the client because I'm working on the business rather than like responding to what their needs are. Does that make sense? It's a very, very structured and very different approach. This approach actually allowed me to spend six months in Europe traveling Denmark, Paris. I lived in Denmark for two months. I lived in Paris for six months. We're gonna go away. It gives me that freedom and flexibility with, to be with my family. So I'm gonna end that video here. I hope that gives you some, some insights. I hope it was structured enough because there were a hundred different things coming out of my brain. And if you have any more questions, I'd be more than happy to answer it. I know that this video in itself 
is going to open a can of worms in terms of like, hey, Lim, can you show us what you did with the ads? Can you show us what you did with the funnel? Can you show us what you did with the sales process? What about the offer? What about building a, a retention, a client retention team to get re-signs? All of those questions, more than happy for you to ask down in the comment section. And if you like this channel so far, if you think it's valuable, then please like and subscribe or subscribe, like the video, maybe share it with somebody else. With that being said, I will see you on the next video.